Hi, this is this is Sam again, and now I'm I'm doing a very, very belated video overview of Volspec number six. This came out on July 31st or so of 2011. It uh, debuted just in time. I think I got the UPS truck delivery on the way out the door to make the dinner before the event where we're launching the issue, uh, which had Ann and Jeff Vandermeer up from Shared Worlds along with um, Jeremy L.C. Jones and Ekaterina Sedia and S.J. Chambers, who flew in, and Nadine, who drove in from uh, Winston-Salem area, and Scott Eagle, who came in from Greenville, and all kinds of crazy fun we had at, at uh, Full Steam Brewery that night, including Ann reading The Bear Gun from, from uh, the Cabinet of Curiosities, um, and the rain on the tin roof being so loud that uh, Jeff asked me to turn it down. That was fantastic. Anyway, rambling intro. Bull spec number six. So we knew we wanted to do a big feature on Ann and Jeff because they were coming up to Durham after Shared Worlds, and um, we thought it would be awesome to to have a feature of them to be the cover story of the issue. And I knew once we wanted to do that, that I wanted to have Jeremy Zerfoss do the cover, and and he blew out of the park. It was amazing. He uh, started by sending me this squid, and already it was awesome. And then he started adding more of this cabinet of curiosities with monstrous creatures ribbon and all kinds of trinkets and, and things in there. And um, just, you know, very <laughs> everything that I could possibly have wanted, Jeremy did. Um, including like crazy stuff around the barcode area and all kinds of cool stuff. So um, it was, I'm just really happy with the way the cover turned out and really happy with the issue too. Um, fiction from Tina Connolly, Stuart Jaffe, Dale Medham, Amber D. Sistla, and Kenneth Schneier. Interviews with Lev Grossman, Louis Shiner, Jean-Claude Bemis, and Teresa Frohawk. Uh, so, okay, here is once again Higher on the inside front cover where they've been, I don't know, almost every issue it seems like after they did a back cover for issue two. They've kind of had the, the front inside on the lockdown. Um, these books are now, you know, getting close to a year old <laughs> now that I'm finally doing this video overview. But thank you so much for the support, Lou. Um, and, we, you know, couldn't do it without the advertisers. So thank you. Um, table of contents, you know, my bone standard old style layout of uh, good stuff. So, first fiction is Perchance by Stuart Jaffe. Stuart is a North Carolina writer. Um, he's part of the Wiley Writers. No, not the Wiley Writers. Oh, man, I always screw that up. He is he's a part of another writing group in Western Carolina whose name is escaping me right now. Uh, Mike Gallagher did this illustration for me. Uh, illustration by Mike Gallagher. And uh, Stuart's story is really cool. It's about basically a, a wife who, tired of her husband snoring, um, just stops sleeping because she can't sleep with him snoring. And so she kind of gives up sleep and starts to slowly kind of, does she go crazy? Does something really weird happen to her? You have to read the story to find out. Um, really pleased. Obviously, it's one of our meteor stories. Um, and uh, really pleased with that story. You know, I, I don't know why. I just started to really dig contemporary fantasy, kind of a contemporary setting of that. Uh, as opposed to contemporary fantasy, this from Dale Medham, We Don't Do Quests, is just fantastic. Um, it's funny, um, and he's going to be mad if he hears this because he hates fake British accents, but remember the opening line? I, I read it as if it was from the narrator of um, the Pratchett audiobooks for um, Discworld. And Before we go any further, let's get a couple of things straight. First of all, we don't do quests. I did that terribly, but it's fun. Um, illustration by Richard Case, who is a local local artist. Um, he also does some work for Red Storm, which is his real job, I guess, <laughs> where he does a lot of art for them. Um, and the PDF version, it's in beautiful color. It's a really cool, really cool drawing illustration um, of the bar scene where, you know, we got our people being interviewing this dark, mysterious figure. Um, and it's, it's just a story that, that it's both funny and it's got some sword and sorcery type feel to it. Um, it's not over the top funny like parody, but it says a like, good humor to it and I really enjoyed it. So I was really, really glad that, uh, Dale 
sold it to me, let me publish it. So another another pretty pretty meaty, you know, couple pages and a half, and then a couple other half pages. And uh, there's our Durham Literacy Center spot for that issue. And this is another kind of meaty, weighty, longer short story, um, Selling Home by Tina Connolly. Her debut novel, Iron Skin, is coming out from tour this fall. Uh, it's basically, if I remember, Jane Austen plus fairies, something like that was the tagline. And I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's coming soon-ish, and I'm pretty excited. Um, when, it, when I got the story explained to Jason Strutz, who is uh, another local artist who frequently, frequently does work for us, um, he helped come up with this thing, because basically in, in Tina's far, not medium future world, basically very high up on these long, tall towers is pretty nice, and then it gets slowly worse, and then pretty bad, and then towards the bottom it's just smog and horror and, you know, people eating each other, I guess. And uh, Most of the action of this kind of takes place in this range, and then we kind of get up here um, uh, selling home. It's, it's, you know, the kind of science fiction I seem to like. It, I, I think... I tried to go and, and put this stake in the in the in the sand and saying, you know, send me some optimistic science fiction, and I haven't gotten too much of that. Um, but even though this is kind of not a fun-looking future, somehow some of the characters that Tina puts in this story uh, just have that voice of of still being good, and I like that a lot. Um, it's a very very you know heartstring kind of story. It's a I don't want to give too much away, but um, you know, uh, a fairly young woman or older girl is taking care of her younger brother home. Um, he's an infant or toddler, and you know she's kind of taking care of him. And um, basically, in this kind of not particularly fun place to be, and she has to take responsibility for what happens. And and um, maybe she gets an opportunity to give him a better life. And it's just a it's a really powerful story for me. And I was really, really, very pleased to publish it. And again, look, you can see this one's, uh, that one's pretty darn long. So people who don't think I publish long stuff, that one was long, darn it. Okay, so here's another one that I accepted a long time ago. And finally, in issue six, I had to publish it. A Fade Out by Amber D. Sistla. I'm pretty sure she's one of the, you know, huge numbers of writers out in the Pacific Northwest. Once we get over to the bio page, I'm sure we'll find out. I know Tina Connolly from the previous story is out there. So fade out, you can kind of see the letters kind of getting more and more distressed and then kind of fading out. This story is really cool. Like, it's hard to classify. Is it, is it slipstreamish? Is it fantasy? Kind of set in a near future art thing. And I just really liked it. I liked the story. And um, I hope you guys do too. hope you guys check it out. Let's see. Yep, Pacific Northwest. Cha-ching, I remember things. Uh, thanks to another, another one of our advertisers, Allison Jansen Editorial Services. So, thank you. Thank you, Allison. So, here's one where the illustration and the story occupy about the same space. And so it's about a thousand word story-ish. Um, this is by Kenneth Schneier. Um, he is in Rhode Island-ish. And I should have said hi when I was up there. Darn it. I'm sure Rhode Island is so small I could have just walked over to his house, right? No. So, um, and that's another illustration by Jason Strutz. <laughs> so Jason is everywhere in all my magazines. Uh, less than absent. And it's got this kind of sketchy diagram of, of this viewer for determining the given number of people within a given structure. And uh, kinda the, this kind of conceit to this story. Uh, you don't want to say too much about a, a short, short story. It's not a flash piece. It's on the edge of flash in a short, short story. Um, I thought it did some cool things. It's, you know, not exactly the hardest hard sci-fi, obviously. There's some, some kind of weird, unknown kind of things going on. Um, but it's one of, the, one of those ones where you combine the art with the story, read it in a sitting, and I hope you, hope you like it. So, fiction, uh, done. And now we'll get to some of the nonfiction. I love the nonfiction. Give me a shout-out if you love nonfiction. So this is Cabin Magic, the title we came up for this. This is an interview with John claude Bemis. He is an, a Hillsborough author of middle grade novels. Um, so he has four books out now. The first three, this, this, this interview was out for uh, The White City, which was the third and final book in his Clockwork Dark trilogy, which kind of reimagines American folklore with some magical elements and not really steampunkish, but kind of steampunkish. 
Um, basically, John Henry's magic hammer falls to the children, and they have to go on these ventures, and, and you know, he really kind of makes a really cool story out of this, and also really kind of reinvents some American folklore into it. And pretty cool. In his latest book, I just read this year, because now this magazine's a year old, so <laughs> I read his new book and really enjoyed it as well. Uh, the Prince Who Fell from the Sky, and that one has nothing to do with Clockwork Dark. It's basically a near to far future kind of thing where uh, people have had to abandon Earth, and the animals are able to talk to each other, and eventually a boy crash lands on Earth, and the animals have to make sense of what he is and why he's, why he's there. So we start with an interview, I mean, sorry, a review by Mer Lafferty. Mer, of <laughs> anyone who's looking at this probably already knows who Mer is, but Mer is Mighty Mer on Twitter. Um, she says, I should be writing. She is the editor of Escape Pod, the science fiction podcast, and so many other things. She always is writing awesome new fiction, which she often, if not always, podcasts for free. Um, her Afterlife series, Marco and the Red Granny, um, on and on. She is a powerhouse, and she is awesome. And she knows Kung Fu, so I have to say that, or else I might be in big trouble. So, thanks, Mer. Interview. This is, or sorry, review of The Wolf Tree. And then we had an interview from Dan Campbell. And I really like to have lots of space for good, long, meaty interviews. And Dan and John had a really cool conversation. Dan went out to uh, John's writing cabin out in Hillsboro, and and uh, they had a <laughs> rip-roaring long conversation about writing, about the books. And uh, I really enjoyed reading it because, you know, I love, long I love nonfiction. Speaking of Jason Strutz, this was part two of The Long Lives of Heroes, which is written by Jeremy Whitley and illustrated by Jason Strutz. They were, they're a tag team on all kinds of things, most notably The Order of Dagonet. It's their, their ongoing comic series. Jeremy's also the writer of Princeless, which was got two Eisner nominations this year. So way to go, Jeremy. And this was uh, installment two. This is um, kind of a future science fiction space fighting uh, aircraft, infantry, um, kind of, <laughs> if you think heroes have long lives, you know, <laughs> not, not so much, but, um, I really enjoyed it. I've got to, part three is obviously out in issue seven, and we get to see part four, the conclusion, if issue eight finally comes out, which it will someday, really. So, this was so much fun to do. Getting to know Lev, getting to know, I say, with my scare quotes, um, just via email, and then I got to meet him when he came for, for an event. One of the best things that has happened to me from, from doing Bullspec, he is really, really awesome, and um, really was a fun thing to do, to interview him and, and be a part of his Flyleaf event. Um, but one of the fun things about this issue is finally, I finally got Kiz Johnson to be a contributor with a review slash essay on The Magician King. And it's basically part review, part how the book makes you react, and I really like it. Um, this is the kind of kind of book criticism I like. I like when smart people who are writers or are well read don't just tell me what the book was about. Um, they kind of break down how it made them feel and how they how they reacted to the book. And I really enjoyed her her interview or sorry her review. So then here's my interview. We go, you know, we talk about the book. We talk about, you know, just the, the journey of, of uh, having a couple novels that had some interesting reviews. And um, then he had, you know, a very well-selling novel, Codex. And then um, he wrote The Magicians, and it came out. And since then, he was been everywhere. And um, so The Magician King came out just before this issue hit the stands. Uh, and here we go. Here's our cover, our cover uh, article, a article slash interview by Larry Nolan of Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. So, this is uh, a photo by Richard Klienik. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, so I'll, I'll show you. Who that is, and uh, you know, on one of the world travels, they found a tiny train and hung out and took got pictures taken. So, Larry uh, talked mostly about uh, the Cabinet of Curiosities and um, their new project that was coming out odd and some of the other stuff they were doing. So, the, yeah, Kevin Curiosity, Steampunk Bible. Uh, at the time, I think they were still working on, not, mm, it might have actually been about to come out, was uh, their massive 
ridiculously huge, the weird, which, oh, 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 aha, I knew I had bookshelves for a reason, so this, <laughs> they were working on, um, their UK version was just coming out, if I remember correctly, uh, this is the US hardcover version, so it is ridiculous. You know, if you read a story a week, it would take you two years. And that is my actual plan. <sighs> All right. So, yeah, this was our Cabinet of Curiosity Summer 2001 Mega Tour poster. Asheville, Raleigh, Durham, Spartanburg, Tallahassee, Hotlanta. And it was so awesome to have him up here. It was fantastic. And so there's the end of the interview. And uh, so, <laughs> another one of the most excellent people that I've gotten to. Uh, correspond with slash get to know with the scare quotes scare quotes is Lewis Shiner who's a brilliant writer um, here in the local area for us and he has written amazing speculative fiction from being one of the groundbreaking cyberpunks back in the day to amazing mainstream slash literary fiction I really enjoyed black and white which is kind of um, a social thriller set in Durham with the building of the uh, Durham freeway and the rise of RTP Amidst the, the the social and civil rights issues, and that's an amazing book. Um, and this was for Dark Tangos, a new novel that was coming out, new short novel. I think that's at work, not uh, at the work bookshelf, not here at home. So that's his seventh novel, and he's written in and out of genre books. His book Glimpses is fantastic, won the World Fantasy Award, and you guys should check out all his books, all of them. Uh, so... We got a photo by Orla Swift, a big old hunkin' photo. And of course, in the, in the PDF version, it's in color, but I can't print everything in color. Uh, first, we had a review by our eminent reviewer, Richard Dansky. And nice media, media review of, of Dark Tangos, which is a, it's a non-genre book for the most part, if not all part. It's, there's often hints of the occult or hints of something else going on in his books. Um, Dark Tangos, I think, is very mainstream as far as that, that, that side of the world. Um, but it's... You know, it's about an American computer programmer who's kind of losing his way, goes to South America, learns to tango, gets involved with, oh, bad history and uh, <laughs> other bad stuff. And um, it's kind of a response to violence. And the themes of violence are, are one of the things I think Lou really brings home in a, in a very humanist way. And I, I just really liked his books, and I'm ready for his next one. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Lou. And then I got to interview him, so we had a nice, long, rambling interview. Is it still going? It's still going with Lou Shiner. And it was just a joy to do. I, I assembled this over actually a, you know, a year and a half of, of email correspondence and kind of putting together topics of conversation and then ironing out really what, you know, what the interview would really be about. And, and I just, it was, it was great fun to do it. And, uh, Made me really bummed I didn't do any interviews in issue seven. Come on, Sam. So, um, I think this is the last interview in in the issue six. This is Teresa Frohawk. She's a, a North Carolina author. Her um, novel here is Miserere from Nightshade Books, and J.P. Wickwire, a young writer slash critic slash uh, voracious reader, I would put it mildly, um, and uh, she's done lots of. I think five reviews for me now. And uh, so uh, she reviewed and then interviewed Teresa and uh, did a great job. And then here, yeah, so here's JP's bio, but then there's another review by her right away. Oh, I also published one of uh, JP's, here's another couple of reviews right here in the same issue. A um, couple, a, a, long one, a long poem of hers in issue two, I want to say. Probably the last poem I accepted before I very wisely very wisely um, turn the reins over to Dan Campbell on the poetry side of things. So, reviews of Enterprise of Death and Deathless and Rogue Apocalypse. All those reviews were by J.P. Web Choir and another review by J.P. Machine Man by, um, by Max Berry. So, boy, this was uh, the J.P. Web Choir nonfiction issue. Man, that's great. Um, Alchemist in the Shadows. This is the next, the second book in Pierre Pavel's uh, series from Pyre. And that's a review by Richard Dansky, who also reviewed the first book a couple issues before. 
uh, one of my favorite contributors to deal with, Nick Mamatas. Oh, man, everything he says is either offensive or funny or both, and um, or insightful, as in the cases when he gets to review for me. Gets to. It's all, it's all me, you know. He's just begging me, begging me. When can I review for you again? No, that's not true. Anyway, Zazen. This is from uh, a pretty interesting, you know, next generation publisher, uh, Red Lemonade. Um, they kind of crowdsource their fiction and then pick the ones they like and publish them and and kind of doing things a little differently. So Zazen by Vanessa Veselka, and that came out in May 2011. Um, it's one of those books that I don't think too many genre reviewers took too hard to look at because it's kind of a near future, very speculative fiction, not science fiction kind of book. And uh, Nick did a great job. It was He was a, a really good fit to be the reviewer for that book. So thanks, Nick. Speaking of Nick, he had uh, two books come out around that time last year. One was a nonfiction book, Starve Better, from Apex Publications. And that's basically, you know, writers, <laughs> learn how to starve better if you really want to be a writer. And then Sensation, which was his short novel from PM Press. Um, basically, wasps versus uh, be, uh, versus spiders in a intergalactic showdown of who can be the better puppet master. Um, really cool. And in, in print, especially, Sensation has got is really cool. I don't have it, of course, sitting around me, but it's got you know pages where the text kind of just drips down and does some interesting things with form. Nick Nick has played with form in some in some some of my favorites of his stories. So uh, just you know, looking forward to what he comes up with next too. And those reviews are from uh, Jason Eric Lundberg, who was a local writer and now he's an expat living in Singapore, and whose story came out in issue number seven for me and for fiction. And we'll get to that soon, hopefully. All right, another review by Richard Dansky, another, another one of the issue's heroes, Sword of Fire and Sea by Aaron Hoffman, who is a previous fiction contributor to Bullspec. It's the first book, um, the second book in that series has come out now. Um, it's her Chaos Knight series from Pyre. Ghosts of War. This is reviewed by Joe Giddings. Joe is another one of my very frequent reviewers, uh, my go-to guys for steampunk especially. Um, as this is by George Mann, another Pyre book. And then here, wow, look at that. Germline, uh, book one of the Subterranean War, reviewed by C.D. Covington. Never get involved in a land war in Asia. She begged for that subtitle, and I let her have it. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's legal. I have no idea. Um, so there's Germline. Uh, now I can. I can ah, Germline. And where? I know I have a Chimera sitting around somewhere. Anyway. Oh well. So book two and three have come out since then, and uh, so he's completed his series. Uh, it's a really interesting series where he he was just here, so why am I telling you? He was just here a couple of Sundays ago uh, for an event, so go check out the video for that <laughs> if you want to know more about Germline. No, no, this video is getting very long. Poetry, poetry, poetry. Dan Campbell has been poetry editor since issue three. He has done an amazing job of putting together poetry uh, for me, and... Um, this is no exception, of course. Space-Time Geodesics by Athena Andriatis, who is a multi-time, multiple-time contributor in poetry. Uh, Petals by Mary Ness. Ruminations Upon a Dandelion Theme by Nathaniel Lee. He's a North Carolina runner. Uh, Spinning the Seabed Dry by Edgar Mason. And Lissa, or Lysa, Depressed by Linda Ann Strine. And, uh, you know, some, some longer, some shorter, some... Uh, from local writers, some from writers overseas, some from wherever Dan strikes a fancy, and there, I think he finds powerful poetry, and I hope you guys like it as much as I do. It's one of the good things about getting a new issue together is I get to read the poetry Dan selected, because I don't even see the submissions anymore. Uh, so here's our editorial page, what happened to the summer. Um, looks like I'm talking about Murr and about um, what's going on, and I'm, I think I've this might have been where I announced um, Natanya and Eric, Nat Natanya Barron and Eric Gregory coming on as fiction editors. So, uh, lots of stuff going on, and uh, talked about the process of talking to Jeremy Zerfoss to get the cover put together. And the back inside co cover ad James Maxey for some of his ebooks. Uh, thanks, James. Oh, I've got something up here. Hush by James Maxey. That's book two of his Dragon Apocalypse series. So, 
that that came out uh, a couple months ago. So, and uh, Great Shadow was book one of that series. And my back cover sponsor, extraordinaire, was Contemporal, who um, their their debut convention, steampunk themed, uh, in June. Obviously, you can see the date up there in Chapel Hill. I thought it went really well. Um, I thought that it, I don't even want to put the, the the qualifier of for a first time. You know, it was just a well-run convention, and it was well attended. I think people were excited, um, and and it it was just a, a good convention. Uh, cheers! And I know they've already got uh, number two, looking to be set to be at uh, kind of more North Raleigh this time. So I have to actually drive. I can't you know roll out to it. I have to I have to drive this time. Uh -huh. But I'm going to go. Very exciting. So that'll be uh, June of 2013. So, hope you enjoyed. This one went really long. I'm very sorry. There's nothing I can do now. It's too late. So, bull spec number six. Uh, there's still a pretty good stack of these available. Uh, issues five and, and two are pretty much gone. I don't think I'm selling those um, in person or online anymore. Uh, issue one I have a big stack of, but um, issue six I've got a medium-ish amount of. So, uh, very shiny, very nice. You want one, get one. Thanks, guys. See you next time.